Ciao everyone, and welcome back to another awesome episode of our Gold Coast Studio Tours. Join us today for an exclusive peek at the behind the scenes work of talented local producer Tim Goodburn. Tim is one of the in-house producers, a big note production, a commercial studio right in the heart of the Gold Coast. Make sure to like and subscribe to help us uh, produce more of these videos and let us know in the comments if you are uh, creative here on the Gold Coast. So enjoy, see you next time. Welcome everyone, I'm uh, here with Tim, a big note production. It's a multi-room, I think, multi-room yeah. uh, recording studio. This is my first commercial recording studio. We are in Burley Head. Tim is uh, going to show us the whole uh, studio, the, all the rooms that we have in here. He's got his own uh, uh, studio as well, and we'll have a talk inside. So, should we, should yeah. we do it? Sweet, I'll show you guys around. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, this is Big Night. Owners over here, Jen and Smudge. Oh, yeah, so tell us a little bit about. Uh, so, you guys working in a team here? Uh, yeah. You have a few people. Yeah. Uh, yep. There's like a crew where there's four of us technically who are all four of you. working okay. in the recording. Yeah. Um, but Jen opened the studio like 20 years ago. Um, she kind of came from a music education background. And, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then teacher, music teacher. had some friends who needed her to write a jingle. Okay. And she, she's like, she got oh, I it. need something to record a jingle with. So they like built a makeshift studio. And okay. They had another location and that turned into here. So it oh, kind of came start. out of necessity. <laughs> yeah. This is studio one. Um, this is kind of like the main studio that um, okay. they actually extended to um, oh, like oh, 10, 15 years ago. This I think. Um, yeah, and a guy called Peter King works out of here. He's a um, lovely guy who's just moved over from Nashville. Okay. Um, so he's brought all of his toys. <laughs> As you can see, he's got some. Um, some uh, some uh, very nice some very nice from uh, preamps uh, from America. You yeah, got yeah. everything. Yeah, so he's kind of this massive Genex. Uh, yeah, so he's kind of working towards maybe doing some Atmos stuff oh, and okay. getting an Atmos yeah. rig going. So yeah, he's just brought lots of stuff over. But yeah, look at this rack here. Yeah. <laughs> To ask your team, when uh, your music journey started, uh, how did you start? Yeah, I think it probably started in the car. Okay. Doing sing alongs. Oh, okay. Okay. My family. I'm one yeah. of one of four. Um, so big family, and yeah, my parents would always sing and um, play, and they yeah. were music musicians uh, yeah parents. yeah dad sings and plays guitar oh. and um mum sings and plays french horn and piano she's like yeah really good so it kind of came from a musical background and then yeah grew up singing along also grew up in like um like church community as well which is like music every week <laughs> what was your first instrument uh it was piano so oh, okay. yeah what happened was my we had a piano sitting at home i didn't really touch it and then um, my second cousins came over from England and they sat down and played the piano and I had it sparked this thought of like, whoa, you can make it sound like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I started ripping into and playing it. So you need to sit down and practice it. Yeah. Like it's so, <laughs> yeah, and that started part of how I ended up where I end up now. I never got lessons. I just kind of okay. taught myself. Um, Mum was really busy, so I'd ask for new sheet music and she just never found time to like go get me more. So I just made stuff up. And that's kind of how I learned how to play by ear and learn. So yeah. you you don't have a formative um, education? I got one um, guitar lesson when I was 12 and okay. I hated it. <laughs> it was trying to teach me how to play Three Blind Mice. So I'm like, no, I want to play Tears and Heaven. <laughs> Like, that's kind of what I was playing already. And then he's like, wanted to take me right back to the start. So I was like, no thanks. Okay. Fun fact, my high school band recorded here. Oh. When I was 16 okay. or 17. Wow. Um, yeah, we did like a full EP. All like pretty, li pretty much live takes. Nice. Um, How long ever was this? Oh, that was 2000. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, oh no, 2008 maybe. Okay. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Okay. Um, and tell us yeah. a little bit more about this room. Well, it's, uh, it's yeah. pretty big. So right? yeah, it's really big. It's a room within a room, so it's reasonably well treated. Treated. We try and keep like rehearsals for night time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When okay. we don't have critical recording going on. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. It's good. This is like a really nice little baby yummy. Okay. Um, it's like yeah, beautiful. I'll track. This is patched to next door. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's really nice and it's nice to have like... How many like bands do it? you have coming uh, weekly in here? Yeah, most nights, yeah. So, okay, every night? Yeah, but, oh, but like okay. maybe like, yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell you how many exactly, but yeah, most nights, most yeah, nights. bands come in and cool. yeah, we've yeah. got like some really lovely bands like who come in regularly and it's nice to have a bit, there, you can do the real like tiny box rehearsal space it's like dirt cheap and stuff but if you're happy to pay just a little bit more um and have a bit of a nicer space yeah this is the yeah. kind of what we go for for clients and what's uh, you say that you had plans for these rooms as yeah, well yeah eventually so with pete he's um used to kind of working some like multi-tracking spaces to have this as like bit of a hub space for doing live recording and yeah just doing nice. strings and yeah, drums that and be, yeah, just yeah. that would that be the room yeah it's it. got that size <laughs> so we kind of got a bit of like a, a look in here yes um to my space so there. yeah we've got like a basic snake to patch in mm -hmm. yeah this is this space so just kind of throughout running songs jamming with people like playing at church and then um yeah, went to uni and then I learned about some of the different arenas. I worked for Channel 9 for a little bit, interning. Oh, okay. Just doing some news stuff, like the sound editing, engineering. Editing the sound engineering. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then at that time, like, that everyone was pretty jaded in the industry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're talking about how everything's becoming automated and oh, okay. it kind of wasn't the most hopeful kind mm. of atmosphere. And then I did another internship here Oh, a, a yes. this studio. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like yeah, you. Okay. <laughs> um, and came in, they're like, yeah, we don't, we've had so many average interns and we don't really take them in anymore, but we'll give you a go. <laughs> okay. Um, and so I started picking up some work and they just gave me some jingle writing stuff to do and they gave me some, lots of vocals to tune. Nice. Um, yeah. And that's kind of how it all started. Yeah. That yeah. kicked off. Yeah. From there, I was working here, finished my degree, um, and then I, my partner at the time and I, we moved to LA. Why? Why did you go? Like, why you oh, over like, there. decided to go to? Uh, yes, to the she, she had an amazing job opportunity. Oh, yeah. Okay. And yeah. for me, I thought, well, music, it might be cool to see what's going on yeah. over there. <laughs> so, made some amazing friends over there, and a lot of them were um, film directors. I started having some friends be like, hey, can you write a score for our video part? And I was like, oh. sure. <laughs> um, and so that's how I started actually um, outside of the studio here, started working independently. Yeah. Um, okay. Just being more of a composer. And then I had a friend who wanted an EP produced for her. She's like, can you produce an um, EP? I was like, uh, working with the artist. Yeah, and that's my first time producing, so. Um, yeah, that's how that started. That's how it started. Yeah. yeah. Moved overseas for six, seven years, and then I've been back here for almost six years now. Um, yeah, and I've just been digging into recording here in this space, which has been no, epic. So, so you've been uh, you've been here a while. Uh, now you you yeah. know you know your room. Uh, yes. Yeah. So yeah. tell me about a little bit. Did you? Um, the uh, treat the room yourself yeah, it was it was pretty dry it was dry so i yeah. think when i started using this space it had been used as like an office space big room and lots of reflections so i ended up getting a lot of treatment yeah a lot of treatment so, did you do it yourself or? i did yeah i did and my wife helped me okay. she was amazing what did you yeah, use for the treatment? Uh, just some rock wool okay. just that pretty much standard and then i just framed it all in hung it up massive cloud i track vocals in it and if i if i need to like really 
get it really contained I'll like put up some baffling or whatever oh, okay. for an artist but I like an artist to be in a space I like them not being in a tiny little cupboard if they don't need to yeah where we start from the piano yeah maybe we can start the yeah. end so this is a U3 that I got it's like an 80s one um, it's really beautiful it's got like a pretty warm tone I know people say Yamaha's are quite bright but I was kind of looking for I just heard that you U1s and U3s are like really solid okay. um, in terms of sound, but it's just got this got damper on, but it's just got like a lovely tone. Mm -hmm. um, and I also wanted to get something that was kind of mechanically sound as well. Um, but I'm not sure if you can notice like the, like that low end's really warm. And it's a little bit, it's kind of like in between a upright and a grand because okay. it's got a longer string length. Oh. So it's got the same string yeah, length yeah, as a grand okay. piano. Um, so you can, you just got a bit more bass response yeah. in that lower end. It sounds good in that room as well. Yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. nice. Yeah, I still want to get tweaked and serviced more. But okay. um, yeah, it's off to a great start and it's been lovely just not having the means of recording piano for so long, growing up just to have the real thing. Yeah, um, yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. They're incredible VSTs and of course, all of that. But but deep uh, sample if you piano. have the room to put a piano, yeah. oh, why not? Yeah. yeah. So how do, you, how do you mic the, the piano? Because I'm seeing a few, few mics around. Uh, yeah, around. I'll usually get just either 184 style oh, okay. mics, pencil yeah. mics. Um, stereo. Yes, stereo though, or I'll get my 414s oh, okay. and just throw them up, like a, just a spaced pair. Um, and then, How far from the, from the buttons? Yes, maybe like six inches back kind oh, of thing. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I've been trying to experiment with like having them in figure eight. So it kind of has oh, more of a... Okay. The room sound. Yeah, um, and it can have some better rejection sometimes some of the mechanical noise oh, okay um, yeah yeah so i know that's kind of been cool and then i'll usually have like either a mono or a stereo mic room mm -hmm. mic just set up with nice. it nice it's crazy because you when you mic up like this you actually don't get that much low end you get most of your low end from the room yeah 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 because yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, okay it's like this resonating chamber and that's actually where you get a lot of that rich tone from not necessarily putting up next to the hammers. So mm -hmm. you get your articulation from there. But that's been an interesting yes. yeah. thing knowing, and like trying to record, do you want it a wide sound? And like, where do you want it pans? Like when you're playing the keys, are you okay. hearing it going across the stereo yeah. field like that? Okay. And, um, yeah. yeah, where you're having your low and your high end and yeah. So yeah, it's been interesting, but yeah, I'm still experimenting. The same with drums, you kind of just keep always doing different things. You, you can do your basic thing and then you're like, no, stuff yeah. I'm doing something yeah. different. And so. then one day you come up with something completely yes. out of the book. And yeah. it's like, wait, yeah. why is it sounding so good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, sometimes the things, you do it all the right way and it doesn't really sound that great. And yeah. then you do it the wrong way and it actually kind of sounds good. Well, I was actually up in Maryborough, which is like way up north, and um, one of my best friends um, is marrying this lovely guy, Curtis, um, and he's a tinkerer and a collector, and he oh. found this pedal steel. <laughs> on Marketplace. Uh, yeah, on Marketplace, and I'm like, oh, dude, can I borrow this? <laughs> um, so um, it's online, but it's been so cool just learning um, the steel, uh, yeah, I had a bunch of artists asking for this kind of set on their track, especially like folky or Americana kind okay. of vibe. Um, so I'm like really not good, but I've just been learning how to. So is it, it is it in uh, some record that, that you produced recently? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. It is. Um, so um, who are the artists that asked uh, for this sound? Oh yeah, there's a great artist, Austin Mackay, who okay. kind of does like folky Americana kind of stuff, and then yeah, another dear friend and client of mine, Gordian. He's a lovely guy. He's been doing some country stuff. Or country, 
Killer-esque. Killer stuff. Yes. Yeah. Um, so everyone wants a bit of steel. But yeah, it's in E9 and okay. how it works is you've got um, this tone bar which kind of floats over the strings. It's a pretty heavy bar. Right? Yeah, it's really heavy. Um, and then you've got a volume mm-hmm. pedal which is, that's like the main sound. It's mm-hmm. like, it's all like spells in. And then you do a bit of like tremolo to kind of give it some feel. Um, and then you got these crazy pedals on your feet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, just, I was like, and then how pedals, many things do you have and to play for a steel guitar? Pe- pedals on your knees as well. So, so I'm just basically le- learn some basic shapes. Um, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's a fun instrument. And then you just make up the amp. Uh, yeah, you're using either this that or I'll go through one of my amp sims. Like oh, I've, okay. I've usually got this in the control room. Oh, um, right, yeah, right. Just for like practicality, and you can. It's really good to record these in pretty clean. But yeah, I'll also just mic up that little amp as well. But um, yeah. So you mentioned, uh, Tim, you've been uh, now in, in this room, um, in this studio for eight years. Uh, yeah, I think, well, yeah, 2014, I left and then US for four years. And then I was in France for 18 months. Oh, okay. And then I came, you've been in Europe as well. Yeah, and then I came back here in maybe 2018. So how long is that? Six years. Six yeah, years. Six years. Six years, okay. Been back here. Okay. Yeah. And uh, since then, uh, you've been... Uh, working with the local artists yeah yeah just pr- mainly. mainly just producing yeah okay um so kind of that full package kind of end-to-end service i like will occasionally master but i've there's a great yeah. guy paul blakey who you yeah Paul. Oh, yeah yeah of course <laughs> got a tool for you. he's a lovely guy <laughs> and so easy to work with and yeah lots of local artists local artists um, so. i've had some been like really fortunate kind of Getting some people that will come up from Sydney or Melbourne oh, okay. or like um, New Especially South Wales. for your... Yeah, South Australia. I've got a cool. few people have flown up to come and record with me, which is nice. really um, flattering. And yeah, there's a couple of bands that I'll record. Um, yeah, it's mainly kind of folky, Americana, indie rock, hmm. um, some poppy stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, mainly singers. So more people who they've got the songs down but they're not playing um it's more individuals or duos okay they're not they don't have like a whole team they're of all, collaborators yeah. and so i'm effectively become their band yeah and so we kind of take that core vision and kind of put flesh around it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of been doing some drum tracking it's probably the most oh, recent right. thing oh. yeah so this is the, the kit. kit yeah house it's, kit i've um, team's kit <laughs> yeah i kind of wanted a big boy drum kit I was using a Pearl Export that I bought for oh, like a okay. couple of hundred bucks and actually got it sounding so good. Um, yes, yeah, so like if you have good skins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was like really stoked. I was like, oh, I want like a like a proper like big boy kit. And then... It's I, a Rogers. Yeah, it? yeah. It's, like, it's like a, a 1973's Rogers kit. And just the dimensions are kind of cool. It's like a standard 16, 16 floor tom. Um, and I think there's a 14... Um, but it's maybe it's 13. Yeah. Um, I think it's 13. But yeah, it's just like beefy. Um, sounds great. I'll give you a little tap of the tone, but it's just like, like sounds it. so nice. And the four tone just sounds unreal. Um, yeah, so that's great. And then I've got some nice cymbals finally. Mm-hmm. I was borrowing stuff of friend, drummer friends, and then I'm like, I just want something just to have. All time, so I got some karopies, which are lovely, especially for like more delicate stuff. You, you don't want super bright. We've got like good stick definition, but they're really warm and they kind of sit in a mix really well. So, what I've been doing because I don't have a um, porthole. Oh, okay. I've either just been having um, a mic directly on the skin there, oh, or okay. right next to the beater. Yeah, right. On the other side. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. To kind of get that attack 
and all at once. So, so yeah. what's their tool mics? Uh, like the 184. Uh, yeah, just 184 style. style. Uh, Mics. Just... And what are this? Uh, this ones. Uh, oh, these use are even they on are, their um, 160s. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hypercardioid ribbons. Um, so really oh, directional. Cool. Okay. I'm using one of them as like a crotch mic, um, or a knee mic, whatever yeah. you like saying. Um, which is kind of cool. It gives you that kick snare focus. Um, um it adds just a bit more glue. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, right and then, in the middle of and the it's kit. great on hats because it's kind of doesn't it ribbons you oh, it's not you, harsh, yeah so usually yeah, yeah i was using the sm7 which i i really liked um and then i've actually got this sewing hyzer oh, um okay, yeah. four four one um that i've been using for snare top but i've just got oh. in the control room at the moment um and then just an acrylite snare it's been yeah. amazing it's so good so easy to tune um yeah, I love it. Yeah, four, 14s on the toms has been epic because usually I hate how toms sound <laughs> mic'd up. Like, um, but they sound epic. Yeah. And these yeah. these are like more like the modern ones, so you can put the hypercardioid. Oh yeah. yeah and yeah. the focus, so there's a bit more rejection, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. yeah, they, they just do such a great job picking up the toms. Um, and then yeah, I've just got a 57 underneath oh, the yeah. snare bottom. Yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much the kit. And then yeah. I'll have a stereo room set up. Oh, usually just yeah. some ribbon mics or just any kind of stereo pair just to get a bit more dimension. Yeah. Like the lights. And yeah, like yeah. It's got some Fighting lights. In. Vibe. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, my wife is an interior designer. And oh, she helped me pick perfect. She you know, helped me pick the color. Because um, I wanted it to feel like really warm. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's call it (laughs) womb-like. I think if anyone's choosing to go into a studio and spend time and money, rather than being in their bedroom, I want to create an experience for them. So I feel like it's bringing out something that they wouldn't have normally. So you, you mainly track live drums uh, for your projects uh, yeah the projects like that. yeah i'm um, these days yeah i'm mm-hmm. trying to track pretty much all of it live okay. if obviously if it's electronic it's electronic so i'm not tracking live drums for that um but yeah i, I like that organic feel yeah. and i feel that people even from a recording experience part of it to be able to have the means in the studio space to be able to do that. And if you have it, yeah, you've got it. Yeah, it's extra time <laughs> and like, way, yeah, it takes up quite a lot of time tracking yeah. drums and yeah. all the mics and editing it and but getting it's worth all right. It. Yeah, I found it's just really paid off and got more of a human element to it in the recordings that really comes through. Um, yeah, so this is all where right. I, this is your desk, this yeah. is your. Uh... Yeah. This is where I spend Your a lot of my life. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> so, like, I can notice, like, you got the monitors a little bit down. Uh, usually you have monitors up, but uh, here uh, you were telling me that uh, you couldn't see the artist through, yeah, the, yeah. through the window. <laughs> yeah, just obviously, yeah, we're going to be able to see what's going on. I think even when they're tracking guitars. Oh, yeah, sitting like, down. Yeah, yeah. see where they yeah. are. And for drums as well, so. It helps. So it's a little bit weird and janky, but mm. it works. You got like a pretty big desk. Uh, yeah, too. yeah. This is just kind of what was in here when I started um, using this space. Um, and there's not much space. You got just a controller here. Yeah, and a few yeah. the yeah, six and so, yeah. Cell. It's kind of I've kind of built. Um, I started off completely in the box, and oh, okay. then just over time starting to uh, get stuff but you really yeah it's just trying to figure out what do you really need (laughs) is it you got the focus sites here yeah just running some focus rights i'd love to get some how many channels uh 16 16 yeah so it's the claret so yeah the claret yeah i was definitely at a time i was trying to just build out my gear and didn't necessarily have crazy budget so okay they're really good if you don't have the cash for UAD, it's like the next kind of tier down that's still like really good value. Yeah. It's like they're, yeah. they're fine. Yeah. They're pre yeah, okay. So 
um, yeah, and it's great having 16 channels because I'm yeah, using like nice. 12 at the moment, 12 plus for your drums. So, um, oh, okay. Yeah, a few months going on. Yeah. So, like, how long you've been using in this? Uh, uh, this free... Maybe since October last year, so six months. But yeah, it's okay. really changed my drum tracking. Um, they're they're wild. Yeah. So it's pretty much I can have all my drum mics with a really good preamp, um, which just means that you're getting so much more transient information, uh, especially with these um, API styles. Yeah. Um, for kick and snare. Kick and yeah, I just, I've noticed a huge difference with the tone. Um, okay. It kind of, you end up adding all these plugins anyway, but it just immediately gives you like- Good a, results. Yeah, it's funny because uh, I'm not really into the whole analog digital war thing. Yeah, but- It's, it, it's not really important mm. to me, but what I've noticed is that, yeah, if you get all of those individual mics through, yeah. you know, it's a big it's, difference. Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's the, it, it, as you said, the workflow, it's important. Yeah. Because like uh, having like an instant, uh, oh yeah, this is already sounding good. Uh, yes. Accelerate everything. Uh, yes. Uh, makes yeah. things much easier. Uh, yeah, uh, exactly. During the tracking time, you know? So I guess it's important that too. Yeah. And uh, you got another one here. That's your one. Uh, yeah. Um, just this UK sound, so it's like a 73 style, so it's yeah. made by BAE. Again, it's just like a m slightly more affordable, affordable one for the two one. channel, yeah. and I was using that on, um, I've used it on vocals. Um, it's got like the noise floors, it's got a bit of self noise to yeah, it, so, uh, mentioning yeah, before, so yeah. if you're really compressing your vocal or having a really quiet vocal, you're going to get a bit of hiss. Mm. Um, so. But for yet um, any louder instruments or for piano or um, drum overheads, it sounds epic. Okay. Yeah, I really love it. Nice. So yeah, it's definitely a good purchase. And then you got two more uh, from the Yeah, I got the SSL 6, um, which is just being great, super easy. Um, I've kind of gone between using the bus compression on mixes. Oh, okay. I'll use it and then think that sounds so good and then like, Nah, and then I'll go back again. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of, yeah, go back and forth between it. But oh, okay. for general preamps, I use it mainly for my vocal mic. Oh, okay. Just for neutral, I'm like, okay, yeah. and mm -hmm. then I can contour it later. Um, it's been great. And same for acoustics. Oh, okay. So if you've got quite acoustic, it's pr pretty decent sound. You give us a name of uh, the artist you've been working recently. Yeah. What's the main... Uh, project the one that you had the most fun uh, in this in the recent times yeah um well yeah definitely shout out to some of my favorites um some dear friends of mine tully john and lisa james they are local uh, yeah local, local, local custom. Cu couple and they're yeah they're oh, just they're got, yeah they're a couple and their voices there's something about a girl and a guy singing oh, oh nice um, um where you just yeah, you can just sit back in your chair and press record. Nice. And it's just such a delight. Harmonies and stuff. Yeah, together. and just, it, and then it's feel music, so it's straight from the heart. I had some like fun with the dregs, um, producing some stuff for them. So they've just, okay. their albums. Yeah, they're the uh, band. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're a duo. Oh, um, a duo. Okay. Yeah, they're great. They're like rowdy. It's like rowdy folk kind of okay. thing. Um, okay. Yeah, but, and they've found some real success recently, which is great. So yeah, really fun boys. Um, they're fun to work with. Um, yeah, Austin Mackay is an amazing guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah young, yeah. tall fella who's okay. so driven and so talented. And yeah, he's an amazing guy. I love- What is he doing? Um, he's kind of like, yeah, um, kind of like folky Americana rock oh, okay. kind of thing, some indie rock stuff. Yeah, he's kind of been pushing more towards like country Americana okay. kind of vibe at the moment. Yeah, it's been great. So another probably two more shout outs would be, yeah, from my, one of my good mates, Jack Gordian. He's got a project called Gordian and he was one of my first clients where I really resonated with the sound and okay. yeah, and he's like part of, he's a huge part of my, my recording journey. Um, and just growing so mm -hmm. big shout out to him he's got an amazing vocal and yeah he's 
such a legend of a guy. He's so easy to work with and so positive. So. Should I go order in history, maybe? Order in history, yeah, yeah, yeah why so not? I was living in the UK, oh, and this okay. is the first guitar I ever bought. <laughs> just, just a basic Fender, but it's actually set up right now as a high strung. Oh, all right. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, so it's, it's oh, natural strung, so it's kind of meant to give the impression of like a um, 12 string oh, okay. kind of thing, but it's... These um, four EADG um, are all an octave higher. Yeah, right. Yeah, but so it's still EADGBE, um, but all but of these not. four. Yeah. yeah, so it's really nice for layering up. Is um, it is it the right the guitar keeping it like it like to go all the way to an octave? Huh? Yeah, I kind of got it set up and the action lowered. It was super high. Yeah, okay. Intonation was terrible. All right. And now it's kind of working. Now it was. So how you use it is you. Um, the bottom E string you'll use a D string oh, okay. instead, and then you're just going up an extra yeah, note. Yeah, so you yeah. kind of find your string got gauge. Hey, otherwise, yeah, otherwise the guitar is gonna yeah, explode. exactly. <laughs> Probably next thing I got was maybe this mandolin. Oh, okay. Uh, which is great. I got this in the states when I was living there. Oh, I lived in America a couple of years, and yeah. It's beautiful. I love mandolin. I wish I was better at playing it. And it's so hard because I the frets are so small yeah, and the action is no. so high. Yeah. I recently <laughs> got a mandolin too for yeah. uh, doing the Italian song. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. but for folky stuff, yeah. Americana country, it's a must have. Um, yeah, it's it sounds pretty good, that one. Oh, my jazz master. Oh. Uh, this is um, just a Mexican one. It sounds great. I've got flat wounds on it, which is really nice. Gives it more of a direct sound nice. um, and takes away some of that kind of harsh okay. mid rangey stuff. This can get a bit jangly, um, but Alrighty. it's got a really nice tone to it and it's kind of doesn't do everything, um, but it's like a good generic mm. sound that's different. Doesn't sound like a strat at all. Doesn't yeah, sound like no. a telly at all. Not at all. Yeah. This is great. It's a Jack Cassidy bass. Oh, um, Jack Cassidy. Oh, yeah. Pop 209 and Jefferson M. Yeah. So it's great. It's, it's so good. again got flat wounds on it. Um, this is kind of my, my Hofner, if oh, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's got some crazy resonances sometimes because of a hollow body. Like yeah, it's okay. got some weird overtones and harmonics. It's really nice for that kind of oh, plucky, it's funny sound. Uh, yeah, it's a Kiss City signature. Yeah, oh, cool. um, and the yeah the attack on them's amazing. Um, also got three three five, just an Epi. So Gibson's like five grand in this water. So um, I think I picked this up for like six hundred bucks. And this has been so good for um, Americana oh, stuff. Okay. It's just so nice. Um, yeah, that kind of like chuggy, meaty, where you want a bit of grit, but not like it's not like a distorted guitar kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, felt this is on the breaking. Uh, yeah, yeah, having humbuckers has been really nice because I haven't really had that style of guitar before. Um, I got a Japanese Strat because I needed, I was doing so many songs and trying to have this strap sound without a strap, which you can't okay. do. <laughs> so the Makes next pickup of the Gotta get strap this is okay. so unique. So yeah, this is great. It's like fine. Mm. It's a nice guitar and the pickups sound pretty good in it. And yeah, I like the cream color. And then mm. I'll show you. So this is like a little resonator. Um, uh, Gretsch, which I've used on one particular track came out really cool, but it just needs to be restrung because oh, the yeah, strings yeah. kept breaking. What was the track that you used there? It's called, called a song called Call Me Lover um, by Austin Mackay. And, oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's just like that really cool kind of vintage -y sound, yeah, nice. like dirty and nice. But um, this is my favorite guitar. It's a Martin Triple Zero um, 15M, a mahogany version. And I have a feel, it's really light. Oh wow. Yeah, it's got a big sound for a light guitar. Um, yeah, so 
love this. I use, use this on most tracks. It's just, yeah, beautiful sounding guitar. Um, yeah, sings really nice for finger picky stuff. Okay. I try and leave all my strings on guitars as long as possible to get them as dead as possible because I've found that tracking, like brightness is usually never mm -hmm. the issue. <laughs> um, in terms of you, you don't really want more brightness in a guitar, you want yeah. less. Yeah. Um, and then just a nylon, which has been great. What's that? Uh, oh, the back, what's that? Oh, that's an auto harp. So I mm -hmm. don't really use that, mm -hmm. but um, it's just one of those things that just that, sits, uh, in, the sits in the studio. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is great. This is Orville, which is yeah, okay. the Japanese, mm. yeah, the Japanese made like, so like Epiphone Orville Gibson. Oh, okay. It was only made in the nineties. So this is like a Japanese J45. So this is like really nice and plucky and dead. It's, um, yeah, really good for rhythm guitar. Um, yeah, okay. and like strummy stuff where you just on that meat without the crazy mm, sustain. Mm. Um, yeah. So that's guitars. And then this banjo. is, yeah, Uncle Jimmy's banjo. Uncle this Jimmy. is from Decatur, Texas. Um, <laughs> I literally got this off a cowboy, an oh, eight-year-old really? cowboy <laughs> in Texas. Wow, he, he okay. had this old Fort Pro and I was playing some instruments in his old house. And then Ooh. he saw that I really liked it. And so he shipped it over to me. Oh. I shipped it. To yeah, oh, oh. that's when I was living in LA. So, oh, wow. um, but I was so stoked. So it's like this random handmade banjo. That's sick. So this is probably good to mention. This is like a lot of my workflow. Yeah, I've got this walrus pedal, um, and that's usually what I use a lot when I'm just tracking on the fly really fast. Okay. If it needs to be like this real intimate, vibey, textural thing that needs to have that perfect amp room noise sound like i'll r run a leader mic up um but outside of that i just use this because the mods in okay. that are amazing yeah big thing is when you've got someone in the studio and you're just trying to get ideas down quickly yeah you, you yeah. don't want to interrupt be stuffing around for eight hours trying to put a mic yeah on an amp and then and make it sound yeah it's like <clears throat> you want to get the idea down so yeah. a lot of stuff i'll try and like use preamps and all of that stuff but then i like being able to run pretty directly into stuff so that that's why having that kind of setup's great and even having like a decent talkback mic setup so i'm doing i'll end up using some scratch guitars or scratch vocals just going through that mic yeah okay um <laughs> which is awesome like, yes and it's yes. it sounds great that mic so yeah that's kind of part of my flow is i kind of i'm trying always trying to find that balance if taking the time to mic something up right, but then mm. not wasting an idea. Yes. Getting yeah. lost get, in yeah. the actual engineering yeah. side of things and just trying to get an That's idea. That's a very important aspect. Yeah, yeah. particularly yes. when, you're, yeah. when you're wearing all of those hats, you're engineering and you're producing um, and often performing Yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, there's being economical and trying to figure out, okay, what's the best use of this time? and yeah. It's mainly about getting the feel and the idea down. Kind of had a mixer set up with a more router to a mixer. So I've got to get oh, another okay. set up. Um, I've kind of got them like through a snake here. Mm. Um, but yeah, and then I've got them all midded up, which is great. So if I've got like a part that I just want to program and then I want to perform the filters or anything oh. like that. I send the MIDI information through oh, okay. the me melody. So I can, particularly I've got an expression pedal um, and stuff like that. And even with pitch bends and things like wow. that, okay. I can kind of perform those because you can't really do, it's hard to do it like while playing the part yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Particularly if you're like working with like attack and release yeah. time. So you're over there and just working with yeah. the knobs. Yeah. yeah, but this is great. So this is kind of like a, a small profit to Dave Smith's mofo so it's four voices and it just sounds awesome this was the first um or the second synth i got so the first one i got was a micro cork okay that i gave to my mate recently because i just wasn't using it this was actually the first keyboard that had this casio which is so unreal i still use it occasionally if okay. like if you want like vintagey stuff or just create a weird pad 
I'll just run this through and then F it up with like a bunch of effects. Um, yeah, that's really fun. But yeah, this mini log's great as well. It's had some issues with pitching at the moment, so it can kind of pitch drift because it's analog and weird and does its thing, but it's great. Um, and then this is another little on loan quarter sound kind of vibe and again for vintagey kind of sounds. Um, yeah, so I try and use like synths where I can that are out of the box oh. just to have some and perform them. Um, I just find it more inspiring than you can have some weird stuff going with like washing out parts and um, oh, yeah, you can, yeah it's crazy good. frequencies yeah. and this because it's stereo as well has crazy stereo panning okay. naturally built into oh, it. So <laughs> yeah, it makes it really fun. <laughs> So, say if an uh, artist wants to work with you, who, who they have to contact, uh, where you can yeah. be found? Just, uh, team, uh, just find me on my email. Email? Yeah. <laughs> email. You got a website? Uh, uh, I don't have a website at the moment. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, but there's uh, the website of the yeah, studio? Big, yeah, Big Note. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yep. So, Big Note Productions is .com. That's the website. Um, so, it's tim at bignote at gmail.com. So Tim, the word at, not the symbol. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. makes it hard. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it was like, this is a great email address, and it's not. Um, so Tim, A-T, big, big note at gmail.com. If yeah. you need to work with Tim, uh, write it down, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tim, uh, that was... Uh, it's, I'm so so pleased to come and uh, visit you, yeah. visiting you here at the studio, and uh, it was a lovely chat. Huh? Yeah. And uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank grazie you so much. Mille. Grazie, <laughs> grazie a te. <laughs> <laughs>